for analysis on this situation, we welcome again Alberto Fernandez, the Vice President of the Middle East Media Research Institute and a former ambassador with the U.S. State Department. Alberto, welcome, welcome back. First, let's make sense of the casualties in Gaza. Our viewers know we're talking about a very small area of land, a strip 25 miles long and maybe six miles wide. The Israeli offensive has pushed Palestinian civilians into a small pocket of land with few supplies close to the border with Egypt. How can these civilians be protected? Well, it's uh, it, it's an uh, almost impossible situation to, for civilians to be protected in a war in such a small area. There are going to be civilian casualties, and there have been thousands of civilian casualties. The numbers may vary, and his, uh, Hamas uh, plays games with numbers, but there's no doubt that the the death toll and the suffering is, is tremendous. There's no doubt about that. And the U.N. Office Coordinating Humanitarian Aid says its effort is near collapse, as ground fighting in the South has made delivery near impossible. But Prime Minister Netanyahu announced earlier this week that Israel will allow more aid to prevent humanitarian collapse. Do you think this will actually happen? Well, it's a strange kind of war in the sense that, uh, for most of it, uh, hundreds of trucks with food and medicine and fuel have come in which is not an ordinary thing that happens in a war. Uh, meanwhile, Hamas has been, been able to fire 11,000 rockets into Israel. So clearly they, they have fuel and they have food for their fighters. So it's a bizarre situation. It's a great human tragedy. It's also a strange type of war that's being waged with these strange uh, rules and strange exceptions that are usually not seen on the battlefield between two belligerents. And the hostages are a big part of that. We'll hold on that for a second because I do want to talk to you about the accounts of the violent sexual crimes committed by Hamas against Israeli women hostages. We're two months into the war. People forget how unbearable it is to read these accounts. Is it possible that international groups are going to condemn Hamas for this? It seems that some of them, uh, a couple of months afterwards, decided to condemn this. Um, their silence uh, was damning in the first few weeks. But I know the UN and some of them eventually, a really, really long time ago, and after many noticed their, their damning silence, came forward and said something about it. But, uh, you know, better late than never, I guess. But, of course, the problem with this is it generates distrust um, uh, by one side of, of the fighting, me meaning the Israelis, thinking that these international organizations are biased and that they have an own, their own agenda. There's distrust from the international community as well where it comes to the protection of women. But now we're weeks into the release of some of these hostages and their testimonies are really starting to come out. The smiling faces that were relieved to come home and were waving are now sharing these harrowing experiences. How will these stories affect the ongoing war, Alberto? Well, the truth comes out. And so we've learned, for example, that Hamas drugged at least some of these hostages as they were being released to make sure that they were placid and smiling and all of that. And of course, we know that the fighting restarted when Hamas refused to release the women that remain in captivity. And both the U.S. government and the Israeli government have said that, that was because it was very, very likely that these women, these young women, uh, teenagers in their, or women in their early 20s, were being sexually abused by Hamas. And that that's why Hamas was so concerned about not releasing them that it preferred to go back into the war rather than just releasing them and giving the people of uh, Gaza a few more days of peace, a few more days to recover. It's a real shame. The Israeli Defense Forces, though, have released images of Palestinian men being detained, claiming they're suspects of attacks or Hamas agents. They were forced to strip to their underwear and kneel on the street in case they were wearing explosive on, explosives on their bodies. An Israeli military spokesman said that they will all be questioned to sort out who's who and to gain information. Alberto, what do these images indicate? Online, it's, it's hard to understand whether this is some kind of an end or just the beginning of more. Well, of course, these Im images are being manipulated by, by everybody, right? They're being manipulated by the pro-Hamas crowd to, as if it's something 
extraordinarily bad or terrible with actually, you know, checking that soldiers don't have weapons or don't have bombs wrapped on, uh, on their persons is, is relatively common in, in warfare. So it's been played up that this is horrible. The Israelis are also playing it up, of course, showing that these guys didn't want to fight, that 150 uh, Hamas fighters decided to give themselves up rather than uh, be killed in the fighting. So images have power. We saw at the beginning of the war, Hamas used the images of, of, of victims, of dead people, of this uh, young woman, half-naked woman in the back of a pickup truck. So both sides use images for, for their own reasons. Visual terror in addition to physical terror. Well, we are going to keep our eyes on the developing events of this war and our prayers for peace. Thank you so much, Alberto. Thank you.